give the Lord a hand clap. I had a, an outline, but I didn't make a program because I knew that it was subject to change by the Ruach HaKodesh. So, I didn't feel stop and talk because it's a whole other language going from the dance worship or worship to talking. And um, I really believe in going with the flow, so I didn't want to cut off the flow. I am so happy to see you all tonight. That goes to everybody. I see we have a couple of you gentlemen in the house. May you be ever so blessed and may you find your feminine side, and that is not meant in a worldly way, because we have both <clears throat> that soft or gentle, really important for us all to have a gentle side, right? So, ooh, yes, God. Jerusalem <clears throat> is the last frontier. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, my main gift with the dance is the gift of encouragement. I live to encourage God's people. I'm very grateful that I cry a lot because the tears are, it's the Holy Spirit tears, it's tears of thanksgiving. And I always make the joke that I would be hiding, hiding under the chairs or the pews if Holy Spirit were not with me. Yeah, I'm really easily distracted, so I'm gonna ask you guys if you wouldn't talk. <clears throat> while I'm talking, just because I'm, I'm like a little kid, I'm really easily distracted. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so um, <clears throat> dance. Many people know that dance is an expression of joy. Not everybody knows that, but many people know that dance is an expression of joy. Guys, can I just ask you if you need to talk, if you can go outside and talk? Because I'm really easily distracted. <laughs> Just out of respect for me. Thank you. Um, the reason I said that Jerusalem is the last frontier is because it's one thing doing ministry out of Jerusalem. Jerusalem brought, um, the Lord brought me home to Jerusalem and then he sent me out like a rocket to the nations. But doing this in the body of Messiah for the women in Jerusalem, that's something quite different. When you dance, you have to breathe deeply. And so when there's dust in the air, <clears throat> it goes into your lungs. <clears throat> so that's what's happening right now. <clears throat> By the way, the bathrooms are downstairs. If you need the bathrooms, there's two bathrooms downstairs. Thank you for interceding for me right now because I'm losing my voice. And that's not very convenient. Thank you, Shua. So we all came here because we need a touch from the Lord. What I have learned about dance, not only has it set me free, <clears throat> but it continues to keep me free. <coughs> Thank you for praying for me right now. If you could pray for me, because I'm losing my voice, and it's, um, the enemy doesn't want me to share. The enemy doesn't want me to share, but we're not going to talk about him. We're not going to give him any glory. I saw a picture of angels at every entrance and every doorpost and all the windows with swords, with swords keeping out anybody that the Lord did not want to be here. Because God has a plan for all of us. <clears throat> When I moved to Jerusalem nine and a half years ago, in the name of Yeshua, when I moved to Jerusalem nine and a half years ago, the Lord told me that I was going to be healed from everything that I needed to be healed from. And I knew that my family would not understand that. Thank you so much. I knew my family wouldn't understand that. Because you don't understand that unless you live here.
We all know that Jerusalem is the fire. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. But what is so amazing is we come to Jerusalem, and in my experience, we die another death. And that's not negative. It's like face press. We get pushed up, our face gets pressed up against the wall, and everything that needs to go will go. <clears throat> There's just no space for it. <clears throat> God told me that I was dancing his daughters into destiny. Don't try to understand that with your mind. It's not, you know, we pray in the spirit, we pray in the spirit. So we understand with our spirit, not with our mind. Father, please take the dust out of this room so that I can speak, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, I bumped into another dancer last week, and she said to me, I invited her to this concert, and she said to me that a lot of people ask her, why is there not yet a dance center in the body of Messiah? And she said to me, because it's the last frontier. And I said, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Because people say, if you want to know what's happening in the world, look at Jerusalem. So the dance is not only the joy that's expressed through moving praise, but dance is deep intercession. Dance with the anointing is healing, it's restorative, it's refreshing. The Lord has asked me to do this for married couples and that they would receive healing in their marriages. I'm doing this in many nations. This is the first time that I'm doing a concert like this in the body of Messiah in Jerusalem. I've done 19 concerts at the first station, very esoteric place, very dark spiritually. I have another one coming up, it's with my 20th concert there. But in the body of Messiah, to do this event, is a big deal. Spiritually, it's a big deal. And we all need to be praying for each other. We all need a refreshing. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to pray in the spirit for Yeah, the reason why I named the concert Moving Forward is because God wants to help us move forward and I know that everyone here tonight wants to move forward in their life really important the fact that we have di different fingerprints proves that we're one of a kind we are one of a kind and this year because I've had some physical issues <clears throat> I'm in the change of life right now and everything's changing <clears throat> but the good thing that came out of it is that it forced me <clears throat> it forced me <clears throat> to care for my heart you know we're told in the Bible to take up our cross and follow Yeshua to die daily and take up our cross <clears throat> but we still have different fingerprints it means that we're all unique individuals and we need to embrace who we are. I, I'm not trying to be anybody else. I don't want to be anybody else. To be who I was created to be is challenging enough. You know, and I, I wasn't even trying to be funny. Um, <clears throat> I didn't mean that as a mocking on myself. It's that to embrace this life that God gave me, that's a full-time job. It's a full-time job, it really is. So my passion is to come alongside his daughters, to come into their destiny. Well, the dance worship, the new song, and the new dance, singing from heaven, singing from heaven, singing from heaven, dancing, I work with this, Technique I call LSD. It, that's supposed to be a little funny. <laughs> Listen in the spirit, see in the spirit, <clears throat> do in the spirit. And so the workshops that I teach, I help people to be as honest as possible when they get before the Lord in worship. Because we can dance in the spirit.
that's, that's what I'm doing. If I'm not dancing in the spirit, let's pack it up and go home. There is no point. There's no point. The Holy Spirit is, is what gives me life. That's my seal that I'm in Yeshua. When you're in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you're in the presence of God. And so we need to sing in the Spirit. We need to dance in the Spirit. We need to speak in the Spirit. We need to prophesy in the Spirit. We are spirit beings. We are eternal beings. Speak the things that are not as though they are. We don't want to just keep our eyes fixed on the temporal. Everything is passing away, but the Word of God will remain forever, and so will we. So I like to put it like this. Right now, I'm collecting my gems for my crown. That's what I'm doing. I'm storing up my treasures in heaven. So my passion is to release you guys into worship. Now, some of us are really free, but we could always be freer. I could be freer. I want to be freer in the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord told me that when I come before him in the dance. To put aside all self-consciousness, to enter into the dance, and to release his river. Daddy God's healing river, his river of delights, is where everything is that I need. In his presence is everything that I need. So tonight, this was an invitation from the Father to enter into his presence, <clears throat> excuse me, and to receive everything. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lord. So my prayer is that you would have a tall drink of water from heaven tonight. You know, yesterday's manna is expired. Today, every day, we have to come before the king and just say more, Lord. God has so much for us. Who wants more? I want more of God. Who wants more? Raise your hand if you want more of God. More, 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 Lord. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. My passion is that there would be one more man here tonight. Um, I know we have Jews here. Do we have any Arabic friends here tonight? Is there any Arab women here tonight? Chabal. I'm really glad you're all here. My heart and the heart of the Gusbari Center is that the Arab women would worship with us. Because isn't that why Yeshua came? We are one man. We're, we're brothers. Yeah, yeah. So, Father, I just thank you for what you're doing, Lord. I thank you that you're bringing us together, Lord. We are, in this case, one new woman tonight, this evening. So, I came here nine and a half years ago. <clears throat> the Lord told me to change the name of the ministry, Redeem, Man Redeem Ministry, Redeem Dance Ministry, to Mantle of Joy. And that's really a kick in the teeth to the pit of hell. My life is a testimony, just like all of ours is. Two people recently told me, one of them is here tonight, that when she spends time with me, she just gets the sense that, that um, I had an easy life. Ha! <laughs> that's so funny. But that's the testimony of God. Hmm. That is the testimony of God. That is the testimony of God. Um, I'm the youngest of four children. My mother was an alcoholic. She drank the worst when she was with me, and it was um, a miracle that I don't have fetal alcohol syndrome, which is a deformity in the face. And I was very blessed to have another mother who raised me since uh, age six. All my sisters and brothers were very angry, not at her, but they needed to be angry at somebody. You can't blame them. We went through a lot, a lot of stuff. It was a really bad scene. And the Lord has asked me to write a documentary, to film a documentary. I'm looking for a documentary maker. I may have one. We're not sure yet. And to have the dance we have through it, since I'm dancing since I'm a little girl. And my, my mom who raised me actually got me into dance. She was Italian Catholic. She married my dad two years later when I was eight. My first mother died, she was 34. And my real mother, uh, excuse me, my second mother, Tina, legally adopted us. We're very close, um, very blessed. My parents are not yet believers. They are very supportive, in spite of the fact that they're not yet believers. God is doing amazing things. But I want to encourage you, we're going to dance together tonight. When we get set free, we're then positioned to move forward into our destiny. We have shackles on us. We have shackles. We may not even know we have shackles, and we need to get them off. In 2011, <clears throat> this is relevant, I was at the House of Peace in Jerusalem, and Ruth Vazell was playing violin, 
and then Aloysia, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, he's a pianist from the Ukraine, moved to America, and then made Aliyah from America, originally from the Ukraine. The two of them were making music together, and the theme was the love of the father. And I wanted to dance because that's how I was tailor-made. That was how I respond to God. Do you want to sit down, sister? There's, there's chairs up there. Or just put up a chair. Just, Abby, could you help her get a chair? Do you want to sit down? This place is so Come sit down. All right, whatever you want. OK, so where was I? Yeah. Somebody with my Thank you, Lord. How's the piece? Thank you. So um, I wanted to dance. And there was no room to dance anywhere. So I closed my eye and I had a vision. The vision was very clear. There was no furniture in the house and all the same people were there. And we were moving in a circle to the right, probably with some variety. And everybody was singing a new song and doing a new dance, a new song. They were singing something from heaven. Not a song that we know, a song that's never been sang. God sang the world into existence. He gave us these voices and these bodies as an instrument of praise. These are mighty weapons of warfare. You are a force to be reckoned with. You have Yeshua living inside of you. You have a powerful voice. You have a dynamic body. Yeah, these are powerful, powerful weapons for the kingdom of darkness. We are so honored and blessed. I think I can speak for all to be in Jerusalem. This is like no other place in the entire world. Boy, if you want to grow, you want to heal, you want all that expedited move to Jerusalem. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So God has put like a key in my hand to unlock the worshiper. When we get unlocked and the river is released, the river of God in us. It says in the gospel that anyone who believes on Yeshua, rivers of living water will flow from his belly. So we release that river. And through the new song and the new dance, we worship God, and in His presence we're transcendent. Right? Thank you, Lord. I'm just listening. I'm just listening to what the Lord wants me to say. I only want to say what's relevant. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. The ministry gets lonely sometimes. It gets lonely because um, there's not a whole lot of dancers or people that are stepping out to dance. There's some in this room. You know, I believe everybody can dance. But there's some people who just respond to God that way. They're here in this room tonight. I hope they're going to dance too. And um, people are coming from the nations to the places where I teach and getting set free just because I'm doing my little part. That's how important it is that we all do our little part. And whenever you hear the voice in your head, who do you think you are? <laughs> That's not the Lord. It's never the Lord. Whenever it starts with who do you think you are, it's always the pit. It's never God. And you could take that opportunity and say, I'm a princess of the most high God. Yeah. You know, we have to know who we are. And it's my passion to come alongside God's princesses and encourage them on to the finish line. To come into every, everything that we're meant to be in God. God says it's time to rise up. Rise up and thresh, daughter of Zion. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up and come into our destiny. We do. And you know, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. When the culture is screaming around you, go, 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 do, do, do. There's no time to pray. There's no time to sow. There's no time to rest in the presence of time. You have to fight that. Because the truth of the matter is, the only thing that's important is that you get in the presence of God. And you don't have to worry about anything. Just step into the prayer closet. God will take it from there. In our very act, like when Moses put his staff into the sea, I think that if he didn't do that, we wouldn't be here right now. It was that one step forward. He had to take that one step. God says, meet me. Meet me. I'm waiting for you. Everything else is screaming out. Come to me. Everything else is saying, do this, do that. And God is saying, here I am, I'm waiting for you. Please come, please come. In his presence is fullness of joy. Yeah. I want to get you up and dancing. Um, I teach as we go along. I want to ask you if you would join me in agreement for the number one vision.
that the Lord has put on my heart to pray in the Tabernacle of David Prophetic Dance Center. Wayne Hillsden talks about how Jerusalem is the worship capital of the world. It is also the spiritual warfare capital of the world. So there is the tension between the two, the last frontier. God has called me to pray in this Tabernacle of David prophetic dance center. He, this is what he told me. When there is a proper wood sprung floor, a wood sprung floor is a necessity for a dancer. It's not a luxury. A wood sprung floor is made to take the shock of the dancer's body. It's very, very important. He told me that when there is a proper wood sprung floor strategically installed in the body of Messiah, the nations will come, they will dance on the head of injustice on that floor. There'll be a shift in governments. He said, the people that are dancing, they will dance people into healing, restoration, salvation, and deliverance. And there will be a shaking from Jerusalem to the nations. Can you see why there's a delay? <laughs> the last one mm here. -hmm. But you know what? He's the God of the 11th hour. He is the God of the 11th hour. Don't give up. Don't give up. God has put dreams and visions in our hearts. Embrace them. There are many people around the world in the body that are running up and down all day long for Jesus and they are broken, broken, broken. It's not about what we can do for Jesus. Jesus and the Father care about the condition of our hearts. God wants us to heal our hearts. Because when we heal our hearts, our ministries will be so much more effective. Are people cold? Are people uncomfortable and cold? Okay. So we have to get to a place where we know that we're loved simply because we're a creation of the master's hand, period, end of story. We're loved because we're his, period, end of story. It has nothing to do with what we're doing for him. God cares about our hearts. It's not, okay, I'm a believer now, and I can get pushed around, and there's a lot of pushing around in the body of Messiah. There's a lot of people getting stepped over. A lot of people, no apologies for me. A lot of people. A lot of people have turned away from the church. That's not what God wants. God wants us to keep our eyes on Him. And the reason why we need to continually forgive is because we're so imperfect. We're like perfectly imperfect. We're, and we have to have a lot of grace. But God wants us to embrace our hearts. You know, we don't just go, yeah, I forgive you. I forgive you. Everything's fine. Look at me. Everything's really good. I forgive Below me, you know why? Because you have a heart, and God didn't make you like a robot. He made you a person because He wants you to be a person, which means He cares about the condition of our heart. So we take what we're going through in our heart and we give it to the Father. Father, this is what's going on. Let me cry, let me kick, let me scream, let me do whatever I have to do in your presence, Lord. Please help me to be honest before you. Because when we're honest before the Father, He can really heal our hearts. And then when we forgive, it's real. It's real. It's not put on. People say, I forgive you. And you know what? They never talk to you again. But they forgive you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I used to have a pastor who said some really, some really great jokes. He said some really great things, like golden nuggets that I remember. And he said that to me once. He said, people say that they forgive each other, but then they, they never treat you the same again. So I don't know about that. You know, what I want to say to you is let's be real with our hearts. Let's be real. Let's be real, authentic, genuine lovers of God. Not cookie cutter lovers of God. Fake, fake, fake. Let's be real. My fingerprints prove that I am unique. Nobody in this world can bring forth what is in my heart that God fashioned for me to bring forth. I say that in humility. I have to be responsible.
responsible for bringing forth who I am into this world, and it's not easy because I'm broken, broken, broken. And each one of us needs to bring forth into this world what we were made to be. I really believe that God takes the most glory from our lives when we embrace the wholeness of who we're supposed to be. Don't desire to be anybody else, because you know what? Other people don't have it better. They don't have it better, some people have it worse. Just desire to embrace who God made you to be. Okay? So um, let's start dancing, because I know some of you are cold. Okay? And um, the first song we're going to do is called Go Deeper. It's out of the Bahamas. Um, from Sophia Gibson Dornell. She now lives in Ohio. It's a beautiful song. And um, Abby, we're not going to do the banners right now. We're going to do the cross. So I'm going to ask um, if everybody would stand up. And I'm just going to go over a few things. I'm not going to use. Is it a problem if I don't use the mic, Drew? If I put this mic down, will it not record? I'm going to yell. You'll need to, you'll need to be really loud. If I put the mic down, will it still record? It's better if you have the microphone. 